Hello, welcome back thriftives and viewers. Today we're going to go over some basic fall gardening prep. Uh, it is a part of the gardening process. It may seem like a lot of work at the end of the year, but it's, um, it's very important. It helps speed up the spring process. And as you guys all know, a garden is a great way to save money. You're producing food for yourself. Um, it oftentimes tastes much better than that you get at the grocery store. And you know, it's, it's a great exercise. Lots of different good things that come to it. However, like all good things, must come to an end. We've got frost in the forecast, and part of frost will basically wipe out a lot of your different soft fruit varieties. Items like kale, uh, sugar peas are oftentimes frost resistant, so they will make it somewhat into the winter. You can kind of keep those um, are less important. However, these nice uh, kind of very vulnerable plants, such as green peppers, tomatoes, um, will actually basically turn into kind of a green sludge as soon as they're exposed to frost. So we've come in here, we've cleared all of our tomatoes out, and you'll want to basically pick all of the tomatoes off the plant, even if they're relatively green like this one. Um, tomatoes are kind of wonderful in the fact that they will self-ripen off of the vine. That's why when you go to the grocery store and you get one of these nice bright red looking tomatoes and it tastes like water, it's because they picked it way young. Um, so keep that in mind, your tomatoes won't taste the same as the fresh garden, however they are still very good. Uh, I recommend storing them on a piece of cardboard like this. It helps keep the moisture and the condensate off of them, which will cause blight, bacteria, different things. Helps keep them nice and dry while they ripen. Um, maybe takes about a week to two weeks you'll get out of this. Your garden will still be producing even after it's gone. The next step you want to start talking about and thinking about is going to be your, your fall tilling or um, kind of re-disturbing that earth you're taking your top section of dirt, which is the most exposed to the elements, the sun. Um, you know, you're, you've got a lot of different activity going on here, whether you've been applying any kind of a herbicide or pesticides, um, it's, it's going to be more linked to that. You're going to basically want to take this top soil and put it to your bottom soil. This is also a great time to apply any soil amendments. We'll talk about that more later, but basic ideas of tilling right now. So if you're blessed enough to have a tiller, as you can see in the background, mechanical tilling, great way to do it. Come in here, buzz through. You want to try and time the soil moisture that you can get kind of a nice ball like this. You're not getting much for residue on your hands. It's still somewhat fillable. You apply a little bit of pressure and you see how it breaks up but it stays in large chunks. The problem with tilling when it's too dry, you're going to expose the soil to a lot of wind erosion. It'll start blowing away on you. And this can be really bad in areas where you don't have the nice thick topsoil cover like we do here. Um, it also harms your bacteria culture that's in the soil, the soil structure. Um, a lot of your nutrients can be blown away in that same process. Same goes for too wet. If you have it where you grab a handful of it and it's leaving mud on your hand, let it dry for a few days. All you're going to do is one, you're going to really make a mess out of your equipment with all the mud, and you're also going to be damaging that soil structure again. You're going to be grinding those bacteria up in there in their most active state, if that makes sense. Um, if you do not have a tiller and you have a relatively small space, um, you can do tilling just with a shovel. Just as we show here, basically you're taking this uh, soil prism, and as you come closer, you can see how it's a little bit drier. It seems like it's a little bit more hard pan, hard packed here. The idea is you're going to want to take this harder material and, and kind of break it up, flip it over. Nice big chunks like this are just fine. It'll weather over the winter and break down into smaller pieces. That being said, the next thing, which makes a, a time for soil amendments, is because you'll have the winter and the springtime to kind of let moisture in on the soil. The bacteria can work it over the next six months, um, depending on how hard your frost is. Um, you can also get a number of benefits against vine borers, um, a lot of the corn husking weevils, uh, different types of beetles. A lot of those pesticide type or pest type insects um, can be exposed to this hard frost by turning that soil over and um, so to speak kind of killing them off and it's a, a very uh, environmentally friendly way to naturally take care of these instead of applying a lot of pesticides. Same thing kind of goes for a lot of your uh, weeds and invasive species that you're trying to get. As you can see, keeping up with it just with a regular hoe, um, very effective. Underneath our pepper plants we have relatively little for, um, you see a few little different grasses and stuff in there. But if you have a lot of weeds um, and you have time before your frost hits, till everything up, let those weeds germinate and apply a herbicide like a 2,4-D. It'll help thin that seed bank. 
However, I'm not a huge believer in that. The amount of seeds that are in your topsoil is, is you know, thousands and thousands. So even if you get that first heavy germination of weeds, you kill them off, there's still, you know, probably 10 or 12 seeds waiting in line there to grow and, and you'll be fighting them all year. Just try and keep up with it as best you can. Um, and that's, that's better off oftentimes than applying a lot of different herbicides. With that, different type of soil amendments that you can apply, depending on how your soil is. If you've got only three to four inches of topsoil, you're gonna wanna look at the different types of nitrogens and phosphorus to apply to it. Great natural way to do this. If you've got leaves in your yard, um, compost, those types of things, put a nice little even coating on it, grind that in there. Um, that'll, bacteria will start eating that, breaking it down, applying those nutrients back. You wanna keep in mind basic crop rotation. Um, if you're growing nutrient intensive products such as corn, you're gonna to wanna to move those every year because they're gonna basically suck the life out of your soil and you'll wanna replace the corn with a nice um, nitrogen fixing rooted material such as like a, a beans. Um, peas are good for that where they'll actually put nutrients back into your soil and kind of keep moving them around. So by incorporating a few of these practices in the fall, it will make your spring planting much faster because the soil will be ready for you. It'll take the winter to recharge, kind of get back on its feet like we do, unplug. Um, and then you'll be able to plant right away. You'll be able to take advantage of that instead of having to wait um, to apply, do all this extra work on top of an already busy time. With this, you'll have an excellent garden next year and hopefully be able to join, um, join in all the benefits of that. And we'll see you on our next video.